Oh wow, getting some glare. Glare galore. <laughs> it's back with sci-fi surprise time in this week. It's not weekly. Why do I keep doing that? Today, <laughs> the number 29 film was The Giants of Rome. I just did that and I'm like, oh, I just, I didn't, I feel like I, I wish I didn't put the heads on them. I think it would have been better, a better representation without, wow, that glare is like unbelievable. So, Giants of Rome. What do you think, science fiction film? No, not really. I didn't really anticipate it to be. There's uh, several Hercules films on this, and this is actually looks like it's part of a Hercules trilogy. There is a Hercules character in the trunks. Um, his name is something completely else, uh, <laughs> completely different. <laughs> it's, an, it's, it's an Italian film, and it's funny because the last film, uh, I, wow, I already can't remember what it was. Yeah, no, I can't remember. I, wow, I watched it two days ago can't remember, and um, Cosmos War of the Planets, that's what it was, was Italian as well. Um, this one, but this one's Italian, and it's from 64, and uh, yeah, it, no, no science fiction elements at all. There's just, it's just, it's a sword and sandals movie, it's an adventure movie, and I gotta say, I really liked it. I really, really enjoyed it, uh, especially coming off of War of the Planets, which I was just like... When will this end? And actually, that made me think, oh, wow, like, do I have to watch all of all of these? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I don't have to do that. But, you know, I'm glad I soldiered through, because War or Giants of Rome was actually pretty awesome. The only confusing things was, okay, so the it's actually a pretty, pretty easy to describe plot. Julius Caesar gets wants some legionnaires to go on a, a you know, not very likely, you know, to be able to complete mission. You know, they're the cream of the crop, and they're to, you know, find some big weapon that the pagans have. Now, the pagans, <laughs> the pagans didn't look very pagan. <laughs> they look kind of like, I don't know, like, I don't know what they were supposed to, I don't know if that's some, uh, the 60s interpretation of pagans, but they kind of look just, I don't know. They look, you could tell, I guess it's important that you could tell who was, you know, who were the legionnaires, you know, fighting for Rome, and who were the other guys, and that's pretty much sort of really what it's about. Um, the pagans weren't really, you know, <laughs> there weren't many lines from the pagan side of things. So, you can figure or forget that. It's sort of, you know, us versus them, ensemble cast you know, cha big challenge, will it even be possible, kind of thing. I, that works for me all the time, and it actually was an ensemble. It was sort of four to five, you know, four or five, four or five, you know, kind of dynamic um, with that. And and it was led by Claudius, as opposed to Hercules. It sort of has this feel it's going to be a Hercules film, but it's Claudius is like the main dude, you know? And I thought, and he was good. And the writing in this was pretty good, especially the the very beginning. Um, but I, it was a fun adventure movie. There was lots of, a fair amount of fighting. It's more like, yeah, yeah, you know, ah, la. But there's lots of it, and there's actually a fair amount of stunts, and they actually did stuff. They're jumping off things. There's horses. There's chariots. There's catapults. There's caves. There's, like, you know, the caves might have been a set. I don't know, actually. They felt pretty cavey. I don't know. And a lot of it was like out in the open and it's like, yeah, it's not really what I think. I don't know exactly where they're supposed to be, but those really look like, you know, deciduous trees, so it just doesn't kind of really super feel like, you know, like it kind of looks a lot, it already looks very familiar, so I kind of feel like it don't feel like it's there, wherever there is. Anyway, it was a lot of fun, no doubt. It was not science fiction at all. One of the only qualms I have with it is the the it was not a great transfer or whatever. You could see like little, like like it looked like blurry bits on the videotape, and the it felt like a transfer from a videotape. That's definitely what it felt like. Um, and um, so there were a fair amount of that kind of stuff, and I think it's one of those things, again, like on a smaller screen, not with an HDMI cable. I gotta see if I can use, you know, using my Blu-ray player a different way, because it's not really servicing, you know, this kind, it's nicer to see it a bit washed out, and the color is not as bright, and stuff like that, so... I, that was that's kind of funny. It might be funner to watch it online. It, and it wasn't the dubbing was pretty good. Often I find with dubbing, 
like you lose some of the story. I don't understand some of the story. That wasn't the case here. So the dubbing was good, and the writing for the English translation was good, and the acting was good. Like, and there was some drama and some, there were, you know, there was a little bit of everything. So classic adventure movie. It was a bit long. It was an hour and 36 minutes, which I was a little surprised at. But it didn't feel like that. Like the there was enough plot to keep it going for that period of time. So anyway, so it's funny because I think a fair amount of the ones left are. You have at least three more, three Hercules films, and who knows if there's more, like, you know, somewhere, like, in disguise, these Sword and Sandals movies. I'm a huge fan of Sword and Sandals movies, huge. I did a big, you know, Sword and Sandals marathon way back in, like, whenever the new Clash of the Titans came out, so I watched a whole bunch of them. And in general, I like Omut Law. You know, there's, a lot of them have issues, especially some of the newer ones. I don't know. It's something about it, but oh, my eggs are ready. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I don't know if you can hear the timer go off. <laughs> anyway, but there, there's something. Actually, one of the things I really appreciated about this film is that I kind of feel like the the I feel like it's almost like we can't recreate what they did here. Like, it's obviously a low-budget film, but there's lots of stuff going on. Like, there are horses, and those are chariots, and these are people, and they're like, there's like lots of them all over the place. But, like, you know, there's some things about it that make it feel low-budget, but it still feels, it still feels big, it still feels adventurous. And I think adventure is one of the film genres that's kind of disappearing. It sort of just fizzled into action, and action is something different. Action is explosions and fights and guns and um, weapons and, you know, you know, it's pretty much about what happens. Adventure is actually like quest-oriented, fighting against the odds, having a goal, often magical or mystical type things, figuring things out, figuring puzzles out, challenges out, you know, some kind of test of character, you know, and some of those things can happen in action films, but usually it's it's, it's not not really. And I like char- I find adventure films it's really, you know, you 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 try you fall in love with the characters and I really did that with this one. The ensemble cast I really felt for them. It was hard it was pretty good with the costuming, you could tell who is who and stuff like that and they had different, you know, skill sets and stuff like that. But so in that way it kinda of reminded me of the 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 2004 King Arthur ensemble cast, you know, against the pagans, right? So it's that kind of thing. Of course, this is a lot less developed. But, like, you know, they worked on that. They worked on the different characters having different, you know, at, like, you know, strengths and what they were called on and who was the leader and, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, so I don't know, like, it kind of, because it kind of, when I looked on IMDb, it obviously looks like this is kind of part of a triple feature, so maybe two, there's two other films with these guys in it. I don't know. I thought it was a lot of fun, but definitely not science fiction. <laughs> so let's see what's next, and let's see whether or not it will be science fiction. Hmm, let's go deep. Oh, it's that one. That's the one that wanted to be picked. That is it. I can't... Where do I put my hat? Oops! Uh-oh! Uh-oh! Whoops! <laughs> Come on, giant's room. Stay giant! And we have Voyage to the Prehistoric Planet! Ooh, I am so excited to see this one because I've already seen... Voyage to the Planet of Prehistoric Women, or or something like that. Voyage Beyond the Planet, or something like that. And this is actually the first one. This is the first one. So chances chances of it being science fiction are going to be good because I've seen the sequel. I'm so curious. I actually really liked the sequel. So it'll be funny if this is just sort of like excerpts from that, which is what I have a feeling it might be. Who knows? Anyway, so took a big break, and now I'm back for two in a row. I hope you're enjoying the return of this series. Um, I'm kind of like totally off kilter with my videos these days, but I'm trying to do them when I can, and so I hope you enjoy them. Okay, thanks so much for watching. Oh, glare!